poor build, very skinny and narrow, get pushed down more easily than you'd like, lacks mobility, and the ability to avoid the rush, lacks a really strong arm. In the 2000 NFL Draft, Tom Brady was the seventh quarterback selected. 21 years later, he now has seven Super Bowl reigns. It took until pick 199 for the most decorated career in football history to launch. There were plenty of teams in search of a quarterback in what was considered at the time to be a very weak class, and every team, including the Patriots of course, passed on Brady several times. But you already know that part of the story. In this video, we're going to go over the other guys. Those forgotten quarterbacks in that draft class that have been defined by Brady. So here's my goal. I want to give you a glimpse into what the thinking was back then, as in why each of these six guys was drafted before Brady. Then we're going to go over how their careers panned out. And finally, we'll talk about what these guys have been doing in retirement while Brady continues to add to his ring count. It seems unheard of for a quarterback to not get picked until the 18th overall selection. If you're wondering, defensive end Courtney Brown was the first pick back in 2000 and turned out to be a bust for the Browns. Chad Pennington was expected to be a top 10 pick, but he fell to the Jets at 18. After coming off an undefeated season at Marshall, where Pennington pretty much obliterated everything in his path, it was a consensus that he was the top QB in this class. Ironically, like Brady, there were questions about Pennington's mobility and arm strength, but scouts praised his brain, saying he could learn a playbook in one day. After sitting for his first two years, Pennington looked like a star in the making when he finally got his chance. In 2002, he went 8-4 as he threw for 22 touchdowns to just 6 interceptions. Then in the playoffs, the Jets blew out the Colts 41-0, and the future looked oh so very bright. But over the next few years, Pennington dealt with a slew of injuries and never quite looked the same. In 2008, though, he had a career resurgence in Miami as the Dolphins went 11-5 with the former first-round pick even receiving MVP votes. Over the next few years, though, he suffered several more devastating blows to close out his career. Nowadays, you'll sometimes see Pennington on TV or radio, but he spends most of his time, as you may expect from a playbook intellectual, as a high school football coach in Lexington, Kentucky. Looking back, out of all the picks in this draft that hurt a fan base, this one has an argument as being the most upsetting. Tom Brady grew up a 49ers fan. The 49ers were coming off a multi-decade dynasty spanning the careers of two Hall of Fame quarterbacks, and now they were looking for the next in line. Little did they know that scrappy guy out of Michigan would eclipse the number of reigns Montana and Young had combined. The Niners even had Brady in for a workout, but they only had him run his 40 and throw the ball eight or nine times. Then they let him leave. When it was time to select a quarterback, they didn't have much on Brady besides what we can all assume was a very ugly looking 40. The team looked elsewhere to Hofstra quarterback Giovanni Carmazzi. He was the man with all the tools to extend their dynastic run. Carmazzi was athletic with a strong arm and seemed like a smart guy. They were willing to gamble on that, even if he came from a small school. But it didn't take long for San Francisco to realize they struck out hard. Carmazzi couldn't even get the play call out in the huddle. He reeked of nervousness and frankly just couldn't handle the pro game. He never threw a pass in the NFL, unless you count NFL Europe. He also played in the Canadian Football League. Then, with our most ironic note of the day, he became a goat farmer. Later in the third round, the Ravens grabbed Chris Redman out of Louisville. But within the Ravens' war room, there was actually a disagreement. Quarterbacks coach Matt Cavanaugh pushed for the team to take Brady 
instead of Redmond. But the team couldn't believe Redmond had fallen this far. So it honestly sounds like if another team took him, then Tom Brady very well could have ended up a Raven. Still, they took Redmond, a former high school player of the year who set numerous records in college. He was a backup as the Ravens won the Super Bowl in 2000. Two years later, he started his first game. But throughout his career, he was always pretty much holding the clipboard. Funny enough, he was actually with the Patriots during the 2005 offseason to provide depth behind Brady. And after a stint in arena football, Redmond returned to the NFL as a backup on the Falcons. His career lasted until 2012. Since then, he's become part owner and team president of the Louisville Extreme indoor football team. T. Martin was part of some dominant Tennessee teams, including the 1998 BCS National Champions. In college, he could run the ball when needed and be an efficient passer on an extremely successful team. So at 63, Martin was selected 36 picks before Brady. In the NFL, he only played in three games and completed six passes. Just like Carmazzi, Martin ended up playing in Europe and Canada. But his post-playing career is quite impressive. He's been an assistant coach for a number of big-name college programs. And this past year, he was hired as the Ravens wide receivers coach. Also, Martin's son, Amari Rogers out of Clemson, is actually one of the top receivers in the 2021 draft class. His other son, Caden Martin, committed to Miami as both a quarterback and baseball player. In the beginning of the famous sixth round of the 2000 NFL Draft, we had Mark Bolger going to the Saints. In his scouting report, Bolger was praised for his awareness and leadership, but lacked any notable physical traits. At first, it would seem that profile was spot on, as he flamed out quickly on the Saints and Falcons. In 2002, though, Bolger got his chance with the Rams. He went 6-1 his first year as a starter, then 12-3 the next year. In St. Louis, he replaced Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner, and was voted to two Pro Bowls. In 2007, he was given a six-year, $62.5 million contract, but that would prove to be a curse as the team pretty much fell off a cliff. By 33, he was released and played one season backing up in Baltimore. In 2011, he officially retired and has since picked up curling as his new passion. Our final member of the Brady Six, Spurgeon Wynn. A player that threw for 24 touchdowns and 19 interceptions in his career at Southwest Texas State. Yes, only the Browns would elect for that over Tom Brady. But hey, like we said earlier, no team saw exactly what was coming. Even Wynn himself said he met Brady at the Combine, but mentioned that Brady didn't really stick out compared to some of the other guys. In his rookie year, he was eventually thrown into the mix and got torn to shreds. The next year, he was traded to the Vikings where he played two more games, and that would be the end of his NFL career. He played in Canada for several more years, and nowadays he's the head energy broker at Amorex Energy. So what do all these teams have in common? They, along with the rest of the NFL outside the Patriots, didn't even bother giving a call to Michigan head coach Lloyd Carr. There was an immense ignorance on Brady due to his combine and the bizarre quarterback battle he was forced to deal with his senior year. All in all, Brady has easily surpassed the career marks of the other 11 quarterbacks in this draft class combined. He has more wins, yards, touchdowns, and of course rings than all 11 of them put together. And as for the six drafted before him, well, I don't think Brady's going to be forgetting their names anytime soon. 